everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and here we are back again with our shoe and today we're going to do a lot of jumping about. Up until now we've really worked with uh, groups of pencils, like bunches of pencils and because we're kind of working our way around all the this sort of peripheral area today there's going to be a lot of jumping about with the pencils so I will do my best to keep them noted probably along the top here as we go along and we can get our picture moved along that little bit more to completion. Before we get started I need to correct myself on information I gave you on the last video but apparently I'm trying to cut my own holiday short after this video which hopefully you will be seeing on Saturday. I will not be back on Wednesday in time for a live stream and I don't know why I told you that because I knew I wouldn't be back in time. I am making other plans for a live stream at the weekend though, like a week today basically, but I will update you more on that when I get back. So for the time being we're back, we're using our Castle Arts gold pencils once again and we're just going to make a wee start over here. So again this is, uh, I've talked quite a lot about just things for preference. I want to stick to the colours that we've used in the tree trunk, again for uniformity, for cohesiveness, but also if you think about it in a practical sense, if there's been a wooden structure built somewhere where there's trees that look like this, there, there's every chance that it might be that type of wood that's been used to build it. So uh, just trying to inject a little bit of logic as we go along there. And those pencils were the Walnut Brown Light, Permanent Brown, Sepia and the Terracotta Light. So I'm just going to have them to hand as we go along. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with, with this sort of cog type. This is a very Kirby thing, this. And I haven't really decided what, what to do with it, honestly. But what, what I'm going to start with while I'm pondering that is the ground here. So the ground's been kind of split into two, which I, I find a bit odd, to be honest. We've got this background area and then this foreground area. So I think the best thing to do with that is to stick with the browns but maybe have that as quite a light brown so as a starting point i'm going to use the terracotta light what we don't want to happen is to use the same colors that we've used as the tree in the tree trunk and end up with something that looks exactly like the tree trunk so i'm just going to start here on this back section with the terracotta light we'll get a little layer of that on the go we might as well start somewhere get zoomed in a wee bit too. So we've got a little bit of hatching here as well which is the where this turned up part of the toe of the shoe is and it's given us a nice a nice shadow there underneath. Um, so next up we're going to grab the permanent brown for the shadow area in here. Oh this needs a sharp. So I'm going to try and get this shadow under here substantially darker than what's going on everywhere else but as with most things we've been doing we're going to build it up gradually. We do it in layers. We do have a squiggle on the outside here. I'm not really sure what that's about, but I'll go with it. So I'm also, now also bringing into the mix a pencil from our last video, and that is the Walnut Brown. And I'm really going to go for it in here, this darker patch. Oh, yeah. oh that's pretty good. Bring this out a little bit here as well. And I'm going to go back to my terracotta light. So again, I, I spoke in the last video about keeping the colours warm, and that's really what we're trying to do here. So we'll pop another layer of that down there and then just use the walnut brown here for a little bit of variation. That colour is very close to what was going on at the, at the sunset behind so let's just pop a little bit of this in so that we've got that nice contrast and definition that I bang on about so much and then we can go back with the terracotta light again. And we'll pop over this side and just do the same sort of idea, just in a very shorter space. And for this very foreground ground, I want to have a lighter patch here because there's going to be light coming um, emanating from maybe this doorway. I haven't quite decided how I'm doing it yet. So I want to keep a lighter sort of semicircle or even V shape here. So I'm going to make this foreground a little bit darker than this part here. So the terracotta light, obviously, which was the lightest colour I've used here, I'm going to use that as the light for this doorway. And again, not, not going for like complete scientificness here. Just want to be able to give that general feel. So we shall 
pop that down like so. So that's the area that we know to avoid with our other colours. So I'm using the sepia pencil now and I am just going to put a, a layer of this down rather than use it as the, the sort of block colour if you like. Again, not fussy about what's going on here with my pencil strokes. Watch my plant pots here. Oh, this is the ground here. What am I supposed to do with that? That should have been hatched. Tut tut tut, Kirby. I'm going to have to fix that right now because that is very annoying. There we go. So just to fill in that hatching there, I've just used a Pigma Micron. This is a 01. So that is a, a, a 0 0.25 millimetre line width. So fairly small, but not really much of an issue because we're going to make that dark anyway. Um, that area just doesn't really make any sense. It makes sense in terms of the shoe, with the shape of the shoe, but it just looks a wee bit off. So I find it interesting that he's not hatched that and kind of left it for, for everyone else to to figure out thanks for that right anyway so back to our ground here i'm going to grab the walnut brown light and i'm just going to start building up a wee bit a wee bit of color here just in patches like this i don't want this to be a really sort of stocky blocky affair here at the front something like that i'll take the permanent brown darken this down in here just where the shoe's actually making contact with the ground or anything else for that matter. And then I'm going to come back with this sepia. I'm going to use the pencil on its side this time. So not flat to the paper, but somewhere between flush and a 45 degree angle. I usually use an overhand grip for this uh, just because it's it's easier. Um, but you can get it a bit smoother with that as well. So we're going to start to build this. The actual body of colour up a little bit now. I'm kind of avoiding this edge because I will blend that in together just shortly. Okay and finally I've got the terracotta light here and I'm just going to start to join up what's going on at this this edge here. I'll blend that in and then I'm going to continue to bring this over the top of everything that we've just done. Again trying to keep that warmth that we've built up as we've been going along with this. And I'm just kind of going back over areas that I feel that are lacking a wee bit or maybe just look a bit patchy. Oh no, we have a breakage. Well, this is not going well at all. Yeah, so areas that maybe look a wee bit patchy or just where I feel like we need a bit more oomph. So this is purely on a case-by-case -case basis and it is based solely on your previous pencil strokes. So this will be a very individual process. Not a generic process, or in layman's terms, the bits that look a bit meh. <laughs> well, as if I'm lacking a bit of terracotta light down here. Oh, that's better. Okay, I feel in behind this little hump as well. <laughs> Don't know why, but I feel like that belongs in here. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to do the same on the other side, just in this wee patch here, and then join it up. I'm probably just going to stick to the terracotta light for this centre part here. So once again start off with the sepia off we go again not not being terribly careful because where's the fun in that I really don't have much to play with here so I'm not worry too much again quite an insignificant part of the image when it's considered as a whole so not not terribly precious about this at all as long as it kind of looks like the other side then that's okay with me so just working on these edges now with the the terracotta light. The palest part I want to be in the middle because I, I kind of feel as if I might have this as a light source. That's what I'd ring fenced with my graphite line. I don't know if you can still see that. Or maybe even if there's a light sort of built up, up in here that's, um you know, highlighting this door here. So either way, just sticking with this terracotta light. And if this is a wee bit patchy, I'm kind of okay with that as well. Um, you know, there's things that could be affecting how that light's shining. So if I just zoom out now, um, you'll see that the impact of it's much, much better when you see above. Yeah, okay, so you can clearly see, oh, look, light, inviting warmth in you come, please. <laughs> that sort of idea. Right, let's move on to this. Um, I was going to say fence post. No, gem, not a fence post, a sign post. And I'm just going to take the walnut brown, get that down there. 
Oh, I need to remember to do this middle bit while I'm here as well. So I don't really think there's any need for the terracotta light in there. Uh, light is going to be the last thing that's involved with that, but we'll, we'll do it anyway. So <laughs> we've got our walnut and permanent brown to add in to make that. I could actually go in with, you know, black, but I feel as if if I do that, it might sort of pop out a bit too much and just look a bit odd and out of place. Um, black could be... There does seem to be quite an adversity to black in general. Um, and it's just because it can be quite stark and it can look quite odd and out of place sometimes. Okay, that's fairly fit. Uh, but yeah, the, there is an adversity to black. And, the, and black, ha black has its place in images. Especially if you've got line work, it's really easy to work it in as an actual colour. Um, I just tend to use it sparingly. I feel that should be really, really dark though. But again, if this light's creeping out here, then maybe. Now, the good thing here is we've got several blacks to choose from. And I'm going to go with the Mars black, which was the one that we used uh, way up here for the darkest dark, dark parts. Um, it is a softer black. That starkness that I was just talking about is less likely to be apparent. You know, it's not quite as jarring. So right in at the bottom of that soul. Okay, bit happier with that. There we go, lovely. I digress. So I'm just grabbing the walnut brown light here as well. And I'm going to take that marv black. Just add in a little bit down one side. There's something that's kind of popping out to me here is there's lots of what I'm going to call bars. Okay, now bear with me on this. I don't mean in the, uh, in the alcoholic sense. But the top and the bottom of this notice, the bottom part of this weird coggy thing, uh, the tops of the windows, the shutter areas, above the signs, here, here, here. There, there's lots of these lines that are obviously the edges of something. I want to keep them all as wood so that again that it brings that consistency and uniformity so the colors that i'm going to use for all those sections together again is going to come from the colors that we've already used and the first color is that walnut brown light and we're going to mix that with a bit of the terracotta light in the spots where we've got larger areas to work in obviously when we've got very limited space like we have here not so much of a thing but in a larger area like this we can use that and give a bit of a bit of va va voom to what we're doing as well. So for this, I need to keep these pencils quite sharp. Quite sharp. Now colours for this, I find I'm kind of like, mm, don't really know what to do with this. So I'm going to take the Payne's Grey. Again, pencil we've already used. Well, uh, the, yeah, Payne's Grey. And the, the, that cog is just screaming, screaming Payne's Grey to me. Now there's that little swirly pattern in the background there. And I feel that that deserves more of a... Um, more of a brighter colour so I'm going to go back to the marigold and I'm going to put that down in there and in this this swirly bit in the centre again proper terminology the swirly bit now if I take the henna brown here just like put a little tickle in there just to give that a, a sort of you know a, a bit of depth in there and I might even just do the same and like round that outside edge there maybe down in here a little bit too so I'm going to take the leaf green deep for this outside part. So I'm literally just picking up colours that we've that we've been using throughout. Pop a bit of that down and then take this Payne's grey, just sort that out there, and add this around this outside part, maybe a little bit in there. Just sort of mute down that green colour a wee bit. Because I have got no idea what this is, let's face it. For decorative purposes only. I just want to grab a bit of this Mars black for the cog. Again, just trying to give that a bit of a more of a feel to it rather than just this flat random object that's been added into something. I just feel like that like it really doesn't make sense. I know it's got the hidden object in it, like I realise that, but um that's just from a colouring point of view, it's, it's not ideal. <laughs> so now I'm going back to the Tuscan yellow light, which was a colour we used ages ago. And I'm just gonna use that to take away some of this whiteness again thinking about keeping warm colors that nice warm feel and just a really popping in accents there is not the entire thing there is a stray leaf in front of this here and it's the first leaf i'm actually going to color in and i <laughs> there we go and that's the henna brown i've used for that 
Yes. Maybe colour in. There's looks. Oh, this is almost like photographs or a checklist or a bus timetable. <gasps> Maybe that's the sign for the bus stop. I could fill in a couple of these boxes just to, you know, make it interesting. I've got the grenadine pencil from before as well. That was in the last video too. Um, maybe just, you know, add a bit of something, something. Well, whatever you want to do with that's fine. I'm not really focusing on it, honestly. I've got this garland here as well. And I would quite like to use the grenadine pencil for this. So I am going to put that down here, all the way across. Maybe even get a second layer down. And then I'm going to take the henna brown pencil again. Now, if we go back to our light theory <laughs> from our earlier videos, then this may be significantly darker. And again, where we've got the tree bark, we can use that as our guideline. And again, maybe even pop a wee bit of Mars black just in that very middle section there. Make it look a bit darker haven't decided on a colour for those yet so I think I'll leave them just now. Let's go down to these shutters and we'll pick up with our, our allocated pencil colours for this. So I'm just going to do the frame and then take this walnut brown light. Oh went over the lines, oh no! Okay that is perfect too. Now I would like to use some greens for these shutters. So we've already got the leaf green deep and I'm pulling in the leaf green light. Now there may or may not be lights on behind these shutters and I don't know what types of shutters they are. But if I put a quick squiggle of the lightest colour down first, doo -doo 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 -doo, then we can sharpen up our darker green. So again, pointy point. That looks like a really offensive lime green. It's not, promise. So even if we want to like darken down along this top edge first, maybe down the side a little bit too. Maybe they're grubby shutters. I think I would like to make them grubbier though. They're just a bit too bright and cheery for my liking. Why would we want anything bright and cheery? And maybe just accent a couple of lines. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. We'll just apply the same logic to this one. Just to finish this off, we'll bring in one of our browns for added extra grubbiness. We've got the permanent brown here. And again, I want a really, really pointy point. I just want to get some definition and a wee bit of separation along these edges. And we can maybe add in a few strokes just here and there. Again up to yourself if you want to do this or not. I don't want to end up looking like a, you know, like a stripey set of pyjamas. I've had that happen before. Some of these lines are just a wee bit too, a wee bit too stark. So I'm just kind of blending them out a little bit with the uh, the darker green that we've just been using. Yeah, okay, I like it a lot. Down to our plant pots down here. So again, I want to use this leaf green deep, but I want this to be really standing out and the same with the lighter green. So I'm going to build these up in layers and I'm going to grab the sepia and just in at the very back here it's going to pop in a little bit there maybe down here as well and then I can go back in with the leaf green deep. I don't know why that feels like such a mouthful to say leaf green deep. There we go lovely. I'm back to my leaf green light here. Maybe we can pop in a little bit of marigold. Again, just a hatched area is fine. Oh, we are in the autumn, so maybe these plants are not so not so green. They're on the turn, maybe. And I think the the henna brown. Or maybe the what let's go walnut brown light. What am I gonna do with that in there? <laughs> oh, let's use the walnut brown on this one. So in at this corner, I'm really pushing that colour in just because it's kind of tucked in behind the other one and for this other one I'm going to use that henna brown and I'm going to take the Mars black just put a little shadow edge on these and do the same on that dark side there that's pretty cute so yeah with this space in here it doesn't make a lot of sense 
other than the fact that it's just a dark space there are times when the best thing to do is just fill that in with a dark color um so i've just taken the mars black it's such a tiny space no one's going to notice it you can barely see it there it's like almost blended in with what's going on with our our little plant pots there so sometimes i just find that's the best option than trying to match it up with something and you know that all that kind of hassle sometimes it's just not worth it so we're coming together nicely now so we're going to head to this last aspect which is uh, our little our little i'm assuming this would be like a living quarters like i feel that would be that would be fair so i'm going to take the terracotta light and i'm just going to pick out the areas that are structurally struct structurally part of the building oh i feel like that's the canopy mm, okay thankfully this pencil is light enough and we shall be able to use it. I'm going to use my Derwent battery powered It probably needs a new battery by now. It's been a while since I've used this bad boy. Let's see if I can take this off. Okay. It's not taking away all of the pencil. It's lightened it up a little bit. That should be easy enough to work with. Okay. Back to what we were doing. And I think I would like to frame this with quite a lot of the walnut brown. Let's see, I feel like that might be terracotta in there as well. I'm not sure. So just working my way around these parts here. I think maybe we'll make that dark as well. That'll give us a wee bit of contrast there as well. And then we've got our window frame. I'm not really sure about this part inside the window. Because it kind of looks like that pattern follows on, you know, like down underneath here like that looks like it joins up there quite a lot so i'm not really sure not really sure what i'm doing with that either but i, I this i kind of like this part of like see the figuring out part i quite like it okay i think i'll worry about the inside bit in a minute i just want to i just want to get the rest of it going so in terms of light source uh nothing here the the tongues hide in most of the side of the house and on account of the roof curving this way uh, there's not going to be anything getting up really apart from maybe that edge there so we'll maybe maybe do something with that for the actual roof i'm going to use the Payne's gray as my base color i feel like um i would have used red for the roof but we have a substantial amount of pinky red colors already and there is such a thing as too much of a good thing and i don't want to push it too hard so I want to get that in and then grab my mars black again and just where this starts to curve round that little section there just start working in a little bit of a darker colour. Very subtle, very, very subtle. And then go back to my Payne's Grey. And then I think I'll add some along the top as well and just bring it down a little bit. I don't I don't think we'll, we'll be that excited about what's going on in this back corner, like it's quite far away. So we can maybe add a little bit more in down the side here and just blend that out gradually. That should be okay. Yeah, so we can see there, there is some tonal difference in the roof. It doesn't have to be completely flat colour. Just makes it that wee, bit, wee bitty more exciting, especially when you're using greys. Not the most exciting colour in the world, but here we are. I like grey. <laughs> now I'm going to do something a little bit radical here. One colour that we really haven't incorporated into the rest of the picture is the blue that we used down here way back in the first video. So bringing in these throwback pencils, so that is the indigo light and the ultramarine and we're going to use blue for the flag. So I'm going to start with the ultramarine because that's the lighter colour and that's going to bring a really nice pop of colour and just a bit of variety to the picture because we really haven't lent on this colour at all. This has very much been a background colour. And we're going to use the indigo as the shadow colour, obviously. The, the, these colours are right next door to each other. So they blend perfectly. So if I, t if I stick two stripes down like this, in fact, there would be a possibly a third one there. And then use the lighter colour to blend these out. It'll give you a nice ripple effect if you leave this area in the middle a little bit lighter. Now that is assuming that the light source is directly in front, but we're we're really not going to split hairs. I think our light source situation is complicated enough without making it any any more complicated. 
but it just gives you that sort of ripple effect on a flag. So again, this is one of the one of the cases where we know what the rule is, but we're we're choosing to break it because why not? <laughs> and if you want to go back in and darken down your darkest darks, then that's fine also. I feel a little bit of a need for that there. Okay. Yeah. So that just gives you a little bit of uh, a bit of excitement up in that top left hand corner, because let's face it, there's not a lot going on up there. And grab my walnut brown pencil and let's start. Working our way down here. And this one at the back, I'm going to press really hard again. Feel as if that's going to be quite dark. It's off in the distance. Not not really a thing. Um, maybe here. We can think a wee bit more. It's still pretty far away, so. But if you wanted to get a wee bit fancy, maybe grab one of your lighter browns or um even one of the orange colours. I'm going, I'm reaching for this terracotta light just because it's what I've been using. But you can pop a wee bit in it, you know, at one end if that's what you want. Give it a give it a bit of a feeling. And the same along here. I feel like that would apply along this side of this roof. If I just do that, but only on that edge, you know, that where it might actually be getting a wee bit of light there. And when you see that with the contrast of the rest of this particular area, you know, that's going to trick the brain into thinking, all oh, right, okay. It's a really easy way to make a light source pop out. I feel like this is all going to be really dark in here. So I feel like, again, I kind of want to keep that warmth, but it needs to be very, very muted. So if I grab the Mars black, I mean, that's mostly hatching in there anyway. And if I pop a light layer of that down across everything, frame included. Yeah, everything's just kind of like tucked in there. That's just solid walnut brown down that side. And I feel like, again, in the, this is sort of recessed. So maybe that's going to be a, a fair bit darker in there. So again, maybe just with the Mars black. And this is our terracotta light. And with that walnut brown, I'm going to use like a zigzag motion there and just meander my way down to the bottom there we go following Kirby's hatching I'm going to flick down in into this area make sure it's nice and dark at that joining point there especially in that apex as well and then using my terracotta light again make sure I've got a nice sharp point and I'm going to go flick 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 up and down Again, just sort of fill in that top edge. But I feel that gives it just a bit more character and makes it look a bit more interesting. And I think I'll carry on and do the same thing on this facing down here. That kind of makes sense. In this bottom area, that's a bit more complicated. I can't really flick. I don't have room to flick down here, so I'll just put some lines in. And I'm trying to keep that quite heavy along that bottom edge again to give the impression that that's tucked in the side of the shoe there okay I'll get away with that and then i've got my terracotta light so i can flick up the way on this side and i'm going to zigzag my way along the bottom here and then flicky flick flick up the way and for this bottom part here i'm going to just put a layer of that along and sort of blend out the the mess that i've made there we go. So I'm putting a shadow in with the Mars black and then taking my walnut brown. And where that, like places like that, where that little join is, that's always a nice spot to add in a wee bit of extra of your darker colour if that's what you want to do. I quite like doing that. I'm pressing really hard. I'm trying to get this down in one layer. So I want that to be really thick, rich colour. There we go. I missed a bit at the corner here though. And so that just leaves this part in the middle. I don't really want to use the Mars black there because this seems to be a canopy that's kind of whoosh coming out of the same shape as the roof but towards us, the viewer, rather than out to the side. Just darken that down in there. Yep, so I'm going to stick some walnut brown in here, just flicking a little bit. So I'm, I'm covering most of this really and I want to just pop back in with this terracotta light, same thing. Just a couple of lines here and there. They're looking pretty good. So I'm going to grab the cadmium yellow in this bottom right hand corner. 
I want to make it look as if there's a light on in there. The reason I picked that corner is because the hatching is very light in there, whereas it's much, much denser elsewhere. So that seems like a good idea, a good place to put it. And I'm just going to take my Mars Black and darken down the rest of this hatching. For this inside panel in here, so I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on, but I'm going to make it a different colour. So this is, the, <laughs> just to be awkward, this is the Walnut Brown Light. I'm just going to pop some of that in there. I want to make that fairly solid though. I don't want too much variation in that. I'm not that bothered about that. Yeah, that's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. Now on this left hand side, I might even add in a little bit of the Mars black over the top because if that's inside and that's in darkness, this wouldn't necessarily be illuminated. You know, it might be quite shadowy. Um, kind of at the point where that's not going to do much, but. And I might even, I don't know how much of an impact this is going to have, but I might pop a little bit of that cadmium yellow down over the top there. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Last little bit. And you guessed it. I would use the blues for the canopy because if I zoom this out a little bit now, look how beautiful that little flag is. Just like, ooh, yoo-hoo, don't forget about me. I'm here. I feel that it's nice to have that. And for some reason, when I was looking at this originally, you know, when I was first thinking about this piece, I don't know why, but I, the colour blue seemed to figure into this part in some way. And I don't know why I haven't figured that out. But that's what kind of like was calling me to that part so i think it's nice if we do include especially since it is the original background colors like that it's nice to have that so let's grab the ultramarine first get a little bit of this down i don't know do we want it to be stripey let's have a think about it <laughs> we'll start with stripes and see how we feel it looks a bit fishmongery i don't think i like that i think i'm gonna fill that all in now I'm trying to cover the pencil underneath, but I actually don't think that's doing me any harm because it's given me a wee bit of, uh, you know, a wee bit of it shining through because there is a degree of transparency with these pencils and I'm actually not mad about that right now. Okay, so I think what we'll do then is we will, yeah, we'll take the indigo, get a bit of that in there, right along the top, sharpen up and we can flick out this darker pencil along Kirby's lines. Kind of struggling with my hand now. It's weird. Like I'm really sh struggling to find the pressure. Like I can see I'm pressing really hard because you can see remnants of pencil flying about. I don't know why that's a thing for me today, but it is. Right, so let's just get that nice and dark there. <laughs> Lovely. And then we can come in with this ultramarine and fill in most of these missing parts. Now it's kind of nice to leave a few kind of unfinished areas as well, just for the purposes of making things interesting no other reason and if you think it looks too patchy then you can just go ahead and fill it in i personally quite like it and we're going to bring this down in here i, I think i want the because the head the hatching's quite heavy here i think i want to lean into that a bit more and make that a bit darker and i need to check and see what pencils we've got available to do that with because i think we're kind of limited i do think this is the darkest blue that we've got um this this indigo yeah i mean there isn't if i just show you the the swatch book there isn't really much else to go on here here's our blues here so here's our indigo light and here's our ultramarine but realistically that you know you're into you're back and either into purples or you're into blacks and greys there really isn't much in the way of options otherwise so I think I'll grab the cool grey deep. I should have shown that. I it was in there. That was a silly idea. This cool grey deep, again, trying to avoid the, the true black, which is supposed to be ivory in this case. The cool grey deep might be a good idea. And put that down first. See in these really hatched areas. Let's just pop that in in these hatched areas and then grab my ultramarine pencil again. So again, I'm using that up and down motion. I'm trying to follow the 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 grain of it if that makes sense i know it's not called the grain but just the way the fabric's falling or the tarpaulin or, or whatever it is canvas then i'm going to do exactly the same thing with the indigo light pencil and again i'm going to kind of like run a line along the top they're pressing quite hard just to show where that fabric's been folded through the wooden part maybe add in a little bit at the bottom here 
Again, just kind of running a line along there, but taking the opportunity to let it stray a little bit. And then just run that ultramarine back over. There's a few spots there where I feel like they're too pale. So again, that's one of the things you can address though when you're when you're zoomed out. So that is that. Speaking of the zoomed out, there we go. Now, how nice does that blue look? So so good. And because there's so little of it as well. It just gives that nice bit of pop. See, I really feel that we were lacking in that top corner. So I thought that's the perfect addition. Well, I have to say, guys, that's it. That's us getting there now. Oh, we've got these little um, diamondy, triangly things. I was going to use an orange, a green and a red. And then I realised that's going to look like traffic lights, isn't it? Oh, maybe we, maybe we should use blue. Balance out the blue on one side of the paper to the other. There really isn't any point of reference in terms of light source here. I have no idea what these are made of, whether this is like a paper garland or something else. Let's use the Tuscan yellow light just because it's sitting right beside me. No other reason. Oh, I can't really because that's okay. We're going to have to go yellow then. Right, let's, let's use the cadmium yellow. See, I feel like it's maybe just like a, you know, like a paper garland type thing. Do you know what I'm talking about? They kind of like all unfold like they're kind of concertina -y. Right, okay, that's it, guys. That's us for today. Uh, thanks very much for coming and joining me. Thanks for hanging out. You know that I always enjoy these kind of videos as well. As I said back at the beginning of the video, I shall be back for a live stream. It will not be Wednesday. Um, I'm going to move it towards the weekend. As soon as I'm back, there will be details of that up on the channel homepage and also stick it out on the socials as well. I know for a lot of you being able to join at the weekend is uh, is much more suitable rather than a midweek stream. We'll get that organised and I shall see some of you then. So enjoy the rest of your day. I'm hopefully still sunning myself somewhere and I'll see you back in the cave really soon for a live stream. Have a great day everyone. Bye bye for now.